well, I'm Sarah. I'm, I'm a theater artist originally from the U.S. I moved to Barcelona like five years ago um, to study the Jacques Lecoq method of physical theater. Um, and then I've been kind of making original work ever since, um, sometimes in a group. And this piece I kind of started out making on my own. And then um, Tesco came on board to direct it. Well, my name is Tesco Palatin. I'm, I'm an actor and well, I would like to try new things. That's why I decided to well, try to direct Sarah's piece. Great. Uh, thank you very much for, for joining me. You are our only international uh, GTF online um, participants, which is great. Uh, it's good to kind of have a, have a mix of people. Um, obviously, we are very sad that we couldn't have the festival this year, but um, bigger things uh, got in the way of that. Tell me a little bit about Navigate, which is the piece you were going to bring to GTF. Sure, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a um, like 45 minute uh, one woman show um, and it it kind of was born out of, so I've like always really loved um, pirates and astrophysics, which probably seem really um, disparate, <laughs> but um, I found that there was like something similar that attracted me to both things, which um, it's kind of like this sense of freedom. Um, so the idea of pirates is like totally the fictional idea of pirates because like I'm sure actual pirates didn't have like a very you know romantic life but <laughs> we have this like really romantic idea of like fictional pirates that I was always really drawn to um kind of like this lack of obligation to anything like not even the law and like kind of this wide open sea where we like we have no idea what's out there um and I felt, felt really similarly about like the universe um that it's like huge and it explains everything like it explains why we're here and like why everything is here um but we know so little about it um and so i i felt like this kind of like possibility in both of those ideas and i'd like always been really drawn to them so i decided to make a piece kind of trying to like unify those two ideas and the narrative thread that i like wanted to use to unify them um it was my first time making a piece by myself um and so I decided to use the experience of like being a woman on my own, uh, like moving through the world alone. So like I, I moved country on my own and um, I wanted to kind of like take that idea and use it as like a narrative thread tying these like two concepts together. Mm -hmm. So anyway, it ended up being like kind of a fictional story about um, a figurehead who comes to life and takes over a pirate ship and then sails it off the edge of the world in outer space. Cool. And yeah, and so I, I made it and then Tesco came on board to direct it uh, this spring. Great. So, Chesco, this is your—is this your first time directing, having pre previously acted, or uh, no? You know, I've, have you directed? I've directed. Before? I've tried. I mean, my small steps in directing. I don't know, classic thing like that. In my formation as an actor, I had uh, on the last course, I had to direct the scene. Okay. And I had to become director. And now, recently, I just directed. Uh, short film i know it's not the same but um making this yeah in this in this uh, world and i'm i'm a little bit of a sergeant when i'm a director and the first time i saw her play i just uh, well i think that what sarah liked about me is that i had no uh, mercy on my <laughs> note on her <laughs> and so on, we're still friends, so yeah. it's not, it was <laughs> not that important. Bad. So, yeah. Yes, uh, but I wanted to try to. I've I've always been um, there's a well, I've always been a text actor. By that I mean how do you say it in English? Yeah, like a classical actor, like classical classically art. trained actor. Yes, yeah. I've, I've been always wandered by the body theater, by the movement mm -hmm. theater. But I took almost no uh, formation about it. I just Everything I know about it is just me trying to experiment with it and that's it. And I was really attracted to all the body work that she does. Okay. Yeah, my background's kind of the opposite. Like almost all my training is in physical theater. Um, so I think in a way like that works really well. And also like Tesco was saying, for, I'd been like alone in a room working on this piece for mm -hmm. like a year almost more than a year um, <laughs> um and like it had you know i'd like shown it to friends and stuff and like tesco had come and worked on it with me like a couple of times um but like being in a room with a director this spring like has made 
well, we, we didn't get through his that long because <laughs> we were interrupted in March. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> something happened. Yeah. And... <laughs> but, um, but, like, it really, like, he's saying, like, he's a sergeant, but I think, like, what I really like is, like, having somebody, like, having somebody tell you what to do as an actor, like, gives you a lot of freedom because suddenly you're, like, not responsible for the whole thing. You just have to, like, make one <laughs> moment work. And I found that really, really helpful and also like freeing after being alone in a room for, for so long. That is interesting though, because you're kind of having, having written and developed this piece, you're, and, and performing it, you've handed over responsibility for your, your creation to somebody else. And now you're letting them literally direct how your creation develops. What was that kind of process like? Um, well, I just find it like really, uh, I find it a relief. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Cause like, it's a lot of work to that. try. Yeah, it's like a lot of work to try and like direct yourself. Like I, when I was developing the piece, I was really strict. Like I would make um, like a rehearsal plan beforehand. Um, I would kind of like separate my director self and my actor self and like try and give myself a rehearsal plan, then try and do it and then film myself and then watch myself afterward. Um, but it's really to, like create and direct yourself. Um, so I found it like really a relief to be like, I kind of like wash my hands of like the overall quality of this thing. And like, I'm just going to be the actor and like yeah. let somebody else worry about how, how the story is working. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, and also like, sorry, Tesco always says like, you know, it, there's like been a couple of times where he's like, made a choice as director that I've not agreed with and hmm. he's always like well in the end it's you know it's 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 my piece so like he's like well if you want to do that way you can do that way like okay you know yeah. like yeah. I don't like that but if, if that's the way it's gonna you know like almost uh, more yeah. of an acting coach in a way yeah yeah I, I see what you mean and it, it must be it must be great to have you know the two the classical training and the physical theater training in the room means you get a quite a nuanced um take on it because there's two viewpoints looking at the same piece yeah what do you think yeah it's, it's much better much much better i on my first list of notes there was a lot about my basics it was sarah how how did you know that but of course you had the, you had the different formation so it was not expected for you to to have those things but also there was as I'm saying she's she's done an amazing work on her own mm. the physical work that she does I'm still amazed I every time I see it is like wow I would love to know how to do that but it's it's well it's it's getting more and more complete more and more compact and I don't know why I'm not a huge um, I'm I don't see very often physical fields mm -hmm. But I can tell that uh, Sarah's plays uh, Sarah's play every time. Just still Sarah's. Every time that uh, we rehearse, it gets more and more whole. It gets more, yeah, a uh, whole thing by mm. itself. And it gets new things. It gets I don't know. We were talking the other day. Remember about the the wonder of space, having that mm. that moment, having that that emotion of being out in space for the first time, being where no one else has been. Mm. Yeah, I think, I think like, energy. yeah, it, it was like, Tesco did a lot of like emotional work with me, like that I, I think that was like a big benefit of him being more of like a text-based actor. Um, Cause like there, I do have a script, um, like I, I made it in my head and then like wrote it down later. But, um, but, like he, he was a lot of times like well what what who is this character like what are you who are you being <laughs> and i'd be like oh i don't know it's just i don't know i'm just being myself i guess My <laughs> yeah exactly um so he did like a lot of character work with me that i hadn't been able to do on my own at all um and that was really useful um and then it was like it's also a bit of like a confidence boost because like i don't necessarily think like the physical parts are like amazing or anything you know um so like helpful to have somebody be like no that actually looks really cool like when he first yeah. came in he was like yeah i'm not gonna touch the physical parts because it worked really well and that was like a you know since i've been alone for so long it was really nice to hear that you know some parts of it worked <laughs> yeah yeah that kind of reassurance that all the hours you put in both directing and acting yourself have have gotten you you know pretty far um i'd say it'd be fairly demoralizing had you come in zesco and said okay that's it 
it's all gone. Cut it all. <laughs> we start from yeah. the beginning. Um, so you mentioned that you uh, traveled, you obviously moved from the States to Spain on your own. Um, how have you found the difference between making work or where are you making work in the States before you, you moved across to Spain? Um, yeah, so I, I study theater in the US um, in Philadelphia um, and I lived there for a couple years before I moved to Spain. Um, but I, I kind of only started making like my own pieces after I did the Le Clock training. I think okay. like, yeah, in Barcelona. So I don't know. I mean, actually in a way like Philadelphia and Barcelona, I think are kind of similar because Philadelphia is like a really inexpensive city mm -hmm. in the US um, compared to other cities. Um, and yeah, not compared to other countries, but <laughs> comparatively in the US, it's a cheap city to live in. So there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of like self-produced theater. Um, and in Barcelona, there is as well. Um, I would say in Barcelona, there are more, um, like publicly funded opportunities. Mm -hmm. I don't know. There's like a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of cultural centers that will like support artistic residencies. Like all of my work has been through, um, different cultural centers. There's a lot of like small theaters that will let you perform there. Um, yeah. So that, that kind of publicly funded cultural um, scene doesn't exist in, in the States to the same extent, no? No, I, I mean, we have like very, very small amount of um, cultural funding in the US. Um, yeah. And what there is tends to go to like big organizations, um, big museums, sometimes big theaters, although usually they're funded by donors. Yeah. Um, and that, like most grassroots kind of theater is all like people producing stuff in their basement or um, like sometimes, you know, small nonprofits making things um, or making space available to artists, but there's uh, almost no like publicly funded small scale yeah. work. So the, the, the kind of system or the, the structures in Spain have allowed you kind of access more, like the residencies I would imagine have been really fruitful because they give time that you- Yeah. Can yeah, exactly. Like time and space. Um, yeah, there are like a lot of really nice um, theaters in cultural centers. Um, yeah. yeah, and there's like programs for, so right now, um, the place where we were doing the artistic residency, um, they're trying to open again. Um, and they're, they're kind of like a theater cultural center and they're proposing some pieces to the city um, to try and get them programmed in like theaters around the city this theaters. next spring. Uh, theaters and, and alternative places. Yeah, yeah. And so they're, they're um, like taking the work that has been incubated in their space and like proposing it to the city to get it produced in like different spaces around the city. Cool. Yeah, that's a great idea. I've, I've been having these conversations now for a couple of weeks and, you know, we're all the artists and art people and only dying to get back to public and you know live performance and you know audiences and all that kind of magical stuff which is obviously the one of the big reasons that we do what we do um and you know a lot of organizations in ireland although we don't have uh, anything near like um guaranteed weather uh, are looking at, at outdoor kind of I uh, work. I really like the idea of taking over public spaces and spaces yeah. that aren't usually used for theatre, and then all of a sudden here's a, you know a, a performance of like really high quality that you just stumble across. There's something really magical about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, one of the um, places where I did the show was um, like kind of it was an old people's home uh, slash oh, cultural cool. center. Yeah, that was like the first place where I. Um, where I developed it. Home slash cultural center. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. And it, so it was like in the middle of the garden and they didn't have a theater. Um, but what they had was like a, so it was like an old farmhouse basically. Um, when it now it's in the city of Barcelona, but it's from when that part of Barcelona used to be farmland. Um, and it had this like kind of great hall that had been preserved mostly, or at least the ceiling had been preserved. <laughs> um, so it had this kind of like vaulted wooden ceiling, which was really cool for the piece because like it takes place on a ship. So yeah, it was yeah. really cool. That's class. And how did the, um, was the audience made up of people from the old folks home? A couple, yeah, a couple of them came. I, I don't know if they liked it. <laughs> like, I, I kind of made, like, a little speech before and was like, yeah, you know, like, thanks so much for coming. Um, it's maybe not going to be, like, something that you've seen before, but, like, 
I really want you that you're here, you know, feel free to like share any feedback or thoughts. And they, they didn't like react very much during the show or afterwards. So I'm not sure what they thought of it, but, <laughs> but they came. I suppose uh, astrophysics crossed with piracy is probably not uh, a usual topic or thing yeah. to have in, in the old folks home. Right, yeah. Plus it's like physical theater as well. So like, yeah. There's a, like there's some text and there's a story, but a lot of it is like me doing some cartwheels and then there's like some shadow puppets and then like a little bit of miming. Yeah. I imagine that's like not maybe what they usually see. <laughs> yeah, I'd say they were probably taking it all in. You could well have changed their worlds with the yeah. introduction to physical theatre. Have the two of you been able to work together over the past couple of months or has creation been kind of stalled? of salt. Yeah. We tried to we, do we did our best, table yeah. work. I don't know how it went in Ireland, but here we've been completely locked at home during two months and a half. Mm. I think and it was long. Yeah, it felt, it felt <laughs> I think it was 78 days or 80 something. Okay. A lot. <laughs> yeah, we couldn't leave the house at all. Yeah, we did not leave the house at all. Except for, well, for shopping. Shopping. Shopping and primary necessities. Yeah. And for some time, uh, for some short period, while well, uh, COVID here has been uh, really ruthless in Spain, we, we got a death toll quite high compared to our neighbors in here in Europe. And so for a moment, we could not, well, nobody could go to work except if you were a central worker. Mm -hmm. That was it. So we had to manage on our own to try to make the peace go on. And well, uh, this uh, lockdown has not been quite uh, gentle for mm. everyone. And so we we went a little bit farther than we were when we when we got locked. Mm -hmm. But you know, well, with this lockdown thing, there are some days that you can work, some days that you cannot. Yeah. And so we we did something. Yeah, but... for like the first month, so we like met once yeah. or twice a week and like talked about stuff we like watched a lot we shared a lot of like youtube yeah. links um and like you know read a lot learning of articles about astrophysics, exactly yeah. learning about so astrophysicists now of the highest degree i presume <laughs> <laughs> no really like he took like a master class and everything like <laughs> yeah. yeah we did we did a lot of research um but you know like eventually kind of like talking on zoom every week is a bit like so what did you learn this week yeah and so eventually it, we were like, well, maybe we will stop for now so we can do it in yeah, And when it is physical theatre based, it can be very hard to, that just doesn't translate to the same yeah. as, you know, it's, it's hard. Yeah. Um, but are there plans now to, now that things are starting to open up a little bit, are there plans to keep uh, working on it or what's the situation in Spain like? Well, uh, now we're going back and forwards. Yeah. Honest. We, so we were... Uh, we're on the second wave of the virus. It's not that uh, ruthless as it was. Mm -hmm. Luckily, the mortality has dropped totally. Yeah. But the infections go on. And so, well... Yeah, so we, we like, at first, the, the cultural center where we were rehearsing had reopened, and they told us, oh, we're going to be open through August, um, and it's the fall. So um, we were looking at, like, beginning to book rehearsals for the end of August, starting in, like, September, because we had a we have a performance coming up um, at the end of October, mm -hmm. so we were planning to like get rehearsals started again. But now it looks like maybe they'll close again. Okay. Um, don't and know if the show will happen in and October. If, and maybe mm -hmm. they well, they choose us on the right. Yeah, they the did city council festival. Yeah, they did propose it. the show to the city council for next spring. Right. So right. We'll yeah. fingers crossed for that. Yeah, yeah. Our goal is to to keep working on it. Yeah, yeah. I suppose um, one of the, the things about lockdown is, as you said, um, kind of some days creativity is exactly what you need. And then there's other days, other days where it's just completely inaccessible. Um, yeah. And, you know, there's a, there's a, a big element of um, kindness to yourself. I think in, in all of this, there's only so much that we're actually capable of. And some days not being able to do it is, is okay, do you know? Um, as frustrating as that feels. Yeah. Yeah, no, I definitely had a really hard time because, um, like, I was working in theater um, until March, like, in a children's theater company, and then, you know, they closed, I lost my job, and then 
um, you know, I was trying to like work on a show over Zoom, but I, and I had all these like uh, festivals lined up for the spring and they all got canceled. And so that was super disappointing. And then like, you know, you kind of get to a point where you're like, oh man, like, I don't want to make anything. Like mm -hmm. everything feels horrible. <laughs> um, so I think like I especially got felt really blocked um, yeah. this spring. And spring is like, for me, I think for a lot of people probably, it's like a time when I usually feel really creative. Like I usually feel like I, a lot of festivals happen in the spring and summer. So like, I feel really like, oh, everything's starting up. Like we're gonna go do things. And then it all kind of like got shut down. And like, for me, at least that was really like my creativity just like, stop yeah yeah that i have to say that's a, a an experience that sounds very familiar both to like myself and also to what i've been hearing from other people do you know that like as you say spring and summer is the point is is really like it's our time because because of the festivals and because people are going on holidays and they're looking for different things to do and it's kind of everything's growing and new and fresh and clean in the spring um and yeah so it's been a it's been a strange out of year for creativity for the world obviously but uh you know um I, one of the things i found was i i couldn't watch and still don't really watch any of the pre like pre-recorded theater stuff that was performed in front of a live audience anything that has been made since lockdown i'm absolutely up for watching but the sounds of the audience watching a show that I can't be in an audience with is just too much for me. I can't do it. Yeah. That's yeah, I don't know. I've, I've had a hard time as well with like the, like, I mean, kudos to everyone for being super creative because I've seen some really cool things. But like a lot of the things that people have tried to make live um, mm -hmm. virtually, I don't like, I, I haven't seen anything that I'm like, wow, that really worked. You know, like that was interesting. Most things that I've seen have been like, that's kind of like a poorly recorded YouTube video, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I think it's really hard. I mean, it's just not the same. Like, even if it's live. Well, we're not used to that, uh, that media mm. yet because we didn't have to. Yes. We, we, yeah. we didn't need it. We have theater now. We have to accept that this is our, <laughs> our new window to the world. I think there's a, I think there's a way of doing it. So one of the things that GTF did um, this summer, we had a project called Interaction, which was all about digital theater practices. And so we had these six artists who were working with digital theater, like digital technologies of all different types. And so obviously that piece was, it was supposed to be presented live. And then we turned it all into just being online. Mm. And it went really well because they, for the most part none of them tried to just do a like your standard play in front of an audience only it's on zoom you know we had people yeah. doing radio and zoom at the same time and we had people doing uh there was one really cool thing that was like entering into an alternate universe through a website i'm not even remotely technical so i wouldn't even dare to try and explain it um and people you know using blog posts so you're kind of in the blog and you're reading the blog but there's all these little hidden bits and pieces that bring you to other things and you know it, and it was great because what they did was they said we can't make a play you you know your kind of traditional audience there artists here we can't do even an untra like a non-traditional play with audience participation all of that kind of stuff can't work but we can do kind of something that is theatrical and has drama and has entertainment in it by turning it upside down and inside out and what theater actually is. I think that's the way that we'll, we'll have to go. So. Yeah, no, I think absolutely like if, if virtual theater is gonna be saying it has to be something, like it can't just be like live in front of a screen doing a show, it has to be something different, like you're saying. Yeah. There's all sorts of cool things happening. Apparently there's some guy in the States who's created like a virtual theater so you actually can come in and take your seat and then the show starts. So it's like being, you know, you, you have to kind of come in and sit down. It's like a, some kind of game or whatever. And then the whole point of it is that you're, you're watching a show, which I think is a really cool idea. Yeah. 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 We'll see. <laughs> Let's see what, this, what the future depends. Yeah. Well, indeed. Yeah. And I think, you know, one of the things that I've, I've heard a lot from artists is that creativity comes anyway and there's something in us all that needs to do it, do you know? 
So it'll it'll come back out and it might be next spring, but your next spring would be the perfect time for it, you know, when things are fresh and clean and new again. Um and you know, maybe you'll be performing navigate in a in a really cool hidden spot in in you know public spaces somewhere in the city, which would be a really exciting way to kick it all back off again. Yeah, yeah, fingers crossed, yeah, for sure. Great. Yeah, I have I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go on. Oh no, like I, I with a friend, um, we started talking, I have a friend who I've been like working on um, a clown piece with and we were talking about like getting, yeah, getting back in the room and working together. We decided that what we wanted to work on this fall um, is like the theme of, um, of like borders, frontiers, um, and not just in terms of like countries, um, although that as well because I'm from the US and she's from the Ukraine, so like they're two very different countries, but we're both like living in a country that's not our home and we're both from outside the EU and that's been like really complicated for both of us in different ways. Um, so like that, as well as like these kind of like immediate physical borders that we've had to like deal with because of this virus, you know, like plastic between people at the supermarket, um, like this cloth border that we have on our face all the time now. So I, I do think like creativity will be born out of the situation for sure. Absolutely, and I, I can't wait. I'm, you know, I do consider myself a, an artist and a creative person, but I'm always blown away by those who write and direct and act, and especially physical theater, I have to admit, because it is so alien to something that I would be able to do myself. Um, and the, the power of it knocks me, knocks me back every single time. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what people, what people come up with to help us express everything that's happened and is happening. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, um, I think on that on that kind of slightly hopeful note, <laughs> um, we might we might stop it there. Thank you so much for joining me. It's been really nice to chat to you both. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank it's you. been really lovely. <laughs> and I I wish you the best of luck with uh, developing the piece and also with um, I suppose the next couple of months. I hope everything goes well and and that you both keep safe. Uh, and hopefully we'll be we we might uh, talk to you soon again. Yeah, yeah. Fingers crossed for yeah. for next spring. So if you yeah, there. you never know. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Well, very thank much. you so much. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Bye.